this is algebra 2 lesson 6-8, graphing radical functions. The formula a equals pi r squared shows the area is a quadratic function of the radius of the circle. The formula r equals 1 divided by the square root of pi times the square root of a shows that the radius of a circle is the square root function of the area. What we're going to talk about today in our essential understandings are a square root function is the inverse of a quadratic function that has a restricted domain. You restrict what you can put in for your x values. When you square each side of an equation, the resulting equation may have more solutions than the original equation. And if f and the inverse of f are functions, and if either maps a to b, then the other has to map b to a. Now, a horizontal line can intersect the graph of f of x equals x squared in two points. For example, you see this horizontal line right here, and this nice little blue dash line here. It can uh, cross the graph here at um, an f of negative 2 and f of 2. Okay. So if you look at it that way, if you switch the graph, if you, you rotated that graph 90 degrees clockwise, a vertical line could intersect the graph of the inverse of f of x in two points, and therefore would make the inverse of f not a function. Because right here, this would not pass the vertical line test. Because the absolute the inverse of uh, the square root, the inverse of x squared is plus or minus the square root of x. Now we could restrict the domain, however. If I restricted the domain and made it so that x had to be greater than or equal to zero then you can see that the inverse would be a function. Because now all I'm talking about here would be this right-hand side of this graph on this side. And if I restrict the, the domain, I would have this portion right here. And this, thus, I would have a function. So inverses of the power functions y equals x to the n, with domains restricted as needed, form what we call parent functions of y equals the nth root of x for families of radical functions. In particular, f of x equals the square root of x is the parent function for the square family of square root functions. Members of this family have a general form, just like the other general forms that we've had. f of x equals a square roots of x minus h plus k. Instead of having parentheses now, you have square roots instead. So if the parent function is y equals the square root of x, the radical function would be y equals the nth root of x. Okay, the reflection in the x-axis, the, uh, you would take the negative on the outside of the square root. To stretch it, you would have a is greater than uh, 1. To shrink it, a would be a fraction. And translating it horizontally and vertically, just like you did every other function that we've had. So let's take a look at a square root by the function for a moment. Okay. You can see this function, graph of y equals the square root of x. Okay. And we're going to uh, translate it. The parent function would be y equals the square root of x. If we transformed it vertically, if we translated it vertically um, plus 2, notice how it would have been here, but it has jumped up two units now. So now here's your new graph right there. There's it translated up 2. Here's it translated down 1. Okay. The parent function is y equals the absolute value of x. Now remember, if we have y equals x squared, some people have a hard time making this graph because they don't understand and they, or they can't remember that inverses. Okay? If I have the function y equals x squared and I have a little x and y table, if x was 0, y is 0, if, and I'm just going to restrict the domain to only positive numbers. Okay? If x is 1, y is okay? 1 squared is 1, if x is 2, y, 2 squared is 4, if x is 3, 3 squared is 9. So y equals the square root of x, and we're only going to talk about the positive values of x. And remember, you interchange x and y. So your new function has still 0, 0 here, and still 1, 1 here, but then it goes 4, 2, and then 9, 3. So if you could remember that, it would be a lot easier for you to graph the translations of the parent function of y equals the square root of x. Okay, so if you remember that, that will help out immensely. So let's go to this. We're going to graph y equals the square root of x plus 5. Okay. Now remember what I said. I said that the parent function, I'm going to actually draw the parent function in blue, and then I'm going to do some other functions in a different color. So my parent function, if you remember, for y equals the absolute value of x, okay, you had your little x and y table, 
if x was 0, this is 0, this is 1, this is 1. If x was, uh, okay, remember, we would interchange your x and y, so it only would be 1, uh, 2, and 4, so now it's going to be 4 and 2, and instead of 3 and 9, you have 9 and 3. So if I plot just this as my parent function, so I have 0, 0, I have 1, 1, I have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, right there, oops, I have an extra little dot out on there. Okay, and then I'm not going to put 9, 3, I'm going to put a little bit, let's see. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oh, yeah, oh, 1, 2, 3. So here's my parent function. Looks like that. That's y equals the absolute value of x. Excuse me, now we have to write the square root of x. So if I'm going to translate that five units up, I just need to take each one of these points, I'm going to put this one in red, okay, and move them five up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's here, and then it's up here, and then this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, that one's there, and this 1, 2, 3, 4, that one's there. So there's the graph of that translated by units up. So that's y equals square root of x plus 5. Minus 7, I'm going to move it 7 down. And that will be that one green. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it goes there. And instead of, remember how we used to do up 1 over 1 for the, for the slope kind of thing? So now I'm going to go, um, instead of, instead of uh, left 2, up 4, I'm going to go up four left, or up four left, right two, one, two, three, four, and so from here, okay, and then for our next point, okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to translate this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and down, you're just going to go to the next point there, up one over four, okay, and you can do that, you can do that the whole way through, okay, so here's your graph of this function. I just need to oops, I missed a little bit. You just need to make sure you understand how to translate your function. And just remember your table. Just remember this nice, nice little table here, and that will help you immensely be able to uh, translate your points. Okay. Some people will have to draw the parent function and count. Others will be able to apply the parent function because uh what this one seven. Because all I'm doing here is taking that, subtracting seven. So I'm moving all the points down seven. So all my y values are going to decrease by seven. So instead of 0, 0, I now have uh, 0, negative 7. Instead of 1, 1, I now have 1, negative 6. Okay? And then instead of having 4, 2, I have 4, negative 5, because 2 minus 7 is negative 5. Okay? So that would be translating uh, vertically. Okay? Now, if we're going to translate it horizontally, okay, you're going to do basically the same thing. You're going to take your parent function, and you're going to move it left and right, just like we shifted left and right before. Okay, the graph of y equals the square root of x plus 3 is the graph of the parent function of y equals the square root of x, shifted left for units. So we started here, we moved here into the same graph, but shifted it left. Okay, and you shifted right. And sometimes people say it looks like it's a different shape, only because they're getting a little less of the function on the same piece of graph paper. So it looks like it's a different shape, but if you have the same length of both of those graphs drawn out, they would be the exact same shape. The ranges of both functions are the set of non-negative numbers. However, their domains will differ. Because if you look at this, okay, the domain of this means we can put in for, for this, this red graph right here. What can we put in for x? We can put in anything for x that is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, as soon as we get something that's uh, smaller than 3, we're going to have the square root of a negative number, and you can't do that. It's a non-real number, which, but that's why you need to restrict the domain. And we talked about that in the last lesson. Okay. Recall from lesson 27 that for any transformations, y equals a f of x minus a plus k of the parent functions, f of x a indicates a vertical stretch or shrink. Similarly, for the combined transformations, a indicates a vertical stretch if the absolute value of a is greater than one, or a shrink if the absolute value of a is less than one. So if it's a, if it's a uh, whole number greater than one, it's going to stretch it. If it's a fraction, okay, it's going to shrink it. A negative value indicates a reflection in the x-axis. So it'll slip, slip it over the x-axis. So let's take a look at this graph right here. Graphing a square root function. What is the graph of y equals 3 square roots x plus 2 minus 4? So to do that, let's just make a little table here. If x equals 1, the square root of x would be 1. 3 times the square root of x would be the square root of, square root of 1 is 1, 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, if x is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2 times 3, which would be 6. 
and if x equals 16, the square root of 16 is 4, and 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 16 which is 4 times 3 is 12. There's a nice little table here. Because what we do is you just multiply all your y coordinates by a equals 3, that stretches your graph. Okay, that means so we did step 1 and step 2 together. Step 3, the values of h and k give the horizontal and vertical trans translations. So you're going to translate the graph. This tells us we should go left 2. And this tells us we should go down 4. Okay. So after all is said and done, we can actually do this graph. Okay. So now we have to do left 4 and down, okay, left 2 and down 4. Okay. So instead of at 0, 0, originally we would be at 0, 0. Okay. But we have to multiply that by 3, we still get 0, 0 because 3 times 0 is still 0. But now we're going to go left uh, 2, which is going to be negative 2 and down 4. So our vertex of this part of the graph is going to be at negative 2, negative 4, which is right here. Okay. And then, if you think about it, okay, this is this is what we this is with the stretch. Now we need to take care of the vertical change and that horizontal change. Okay. So after we have the uh, value of three, we go left two, that becomes negative one, and we go down four. Okay. So you go. Uh, okay. So you should have a, a, a graph that's of this caliber. You're going to just shift everything. Okay. Remember, originally. Your graph looks a little like this. Okay, right? Now we're shifting it. I should be probably doing that color, but that's my parent function. My new graph then, okay, I'm going to put the first color. My new graph then is going to be shifted. It's going to be stretched by factor three, shifted left and down four. Okay, so you could, some people like to shift it first and then multiply it. Okay, so they like to look at this and go, okay, from here, from my original, I'm going to go left 2 and down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then multiply that by 3, okay, which will be, so, but it doesn't work really well that way. I like using the table first and then taking care of that. So if we look at this graph, okay, we're going to translate the graph left 2 units and down 4 units after we multiply all the y coordinates by 3, as it's a. Okay. So, all right, so now the next point. So basically our graph is going to look like this. I close it here, so we're basically looking at a graph that goes like that. So there's that function of this, there's that graph. It's stretched vertically by 3, right? It's left 2 and down 4. And if you have to make a table to do that, that's fine. You can do each step of the table. Now, the function f of x equals the cube root of x is the inverse of x cubed. Unlike the square root of x, the domain and range are all real numbers because you can have a negative cube root. Okay, so you don't have to restrict your domain. The pattern for graphing square root functions applies to other radical functions as well. Okay. All right, so what is the graph of 3? Y, me, y equals 3 minus 1 half cube roots of x minus 2. Okay, so you're like, oh, wow, that's really quite complex. Well, let's graph first y equals the cube root of x. Okay, and that might not be too easy to do without actually having some sort of a little bit of a table. Okay, so if I was to graph the cube root of x, okay, I'm going to make a little table here, y equals the cube root of x. And I'm going to use 0, so I'm going to use 0. And if I've got 1, the cube root of 1 is 1. And then I'm going to go with numbers I know the perfect cubes of, so I'm going to say let x equal 8 because the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay. I'm going to let x equal negative 1 because the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And I'm going to let x equal negative 8 because the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. I probably should have put those in order, but oh well. Okay. So I have points 0, 0, 1, 1. 8, 2, which doesn't even fit on my graph here. That's terrible. 9, 5, 6, 7, 8. You'd probably be there. Okay. Negative 1, 1. Okay. Negative 1, 1. You're looking at me going, this is the weirdest looking graph I've ever looks Negative 1, negative 1. So that's my graph at the right spot. Negative 1, negative 1. And then you're going to be there. 
and negative 8, negative 2, times x and b, probably around there. So my graph of my parent function looks a little like this. And okay, there's my parent function. Looks like a really elongated S. <laughs> okay. So there's my parent function. Now, I have to shrink it. Okay, well, first of all, let's do this. Okay. We should write it in standard form now because originally it was written y equals 3 minus 1 half cube roots of x minus 2. So now if I'm going to do that, y is going to equal negative 1 half cube roots of x minus 2 uh, plus 3. I'm just going to move this to the back where it belongs. Okay. So it's now shrinking by negative 1 half. So it's going to reflect and shrink, possibly. Okay. It's going to go right 2 and up 3. Okay. So Every point is going to basically be cut in half, so it's going to shrink, it's going to squeeze together a little bit. And we're going to shift it to the right two units and up three units. Okay. So if I took my original point, let's take this original point here. If we shift it um, right two, one, two, and up three, one, two, three, but then we have to cut that in half, so it's going to be about there. Okay. And if we took this original point, right here, the 1, 1, and if I shifted it right to 1, 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then cut that in half, that's going to be about there. Okay, it's kind of weird. It's just... Okay, so... Should be... Okay. Okay, let's back up here just a second, because I think that we have stuff to get these points going. All right, so let's go back to this. This is my original function, y equals the cube root of x. That's my parent function. Right. And I'm going to shrink it by a negative one half, which is also going to reflect it. I'm going to move it two left and three up. Excuse me, two right and three up. I do that all the time. So essentially, if x was two, y is now going to be three. So there's that point there. If x was 3, y is going to be about 2 and a half here. So essentially, I'm going to have a graph that looks, ah, that looks terrible. I am not very good at it. So essentially, we're going to have a graph that looks like this. Okay? And it's going to go something like that. Um, most of the time, I'm going to let you use your calculator to graph these because these are really hard to graph without either using a calculator or making a table or doing some things. So pretty much, um, I will allow you to use your calculator to graph the transformations. I just want you to be able to tell me what the transformations would be. You should be able to tell me that this is a transformation of shrinking by negative a half, which also reflects it over the x-axis. It's uh, shifting right two units and up three units. And then from there, I would expect that you'd probably use your calculator to do that to do the graphing section of it. The square root functions. I expect you to be able to do without your calculator. Cube root functions are a bit more complicated, so I'm probably going to let you use your calculators after you can tell me what it did. For example, the shift is two units right, three units up, and it shrinks by a factor of a half. Then stick it in your calculator and draw your upper root graph. Okay, next problem. You can graph functions in the form of y equals the nth root of dx plus c using transformations if you can simplify the radicand so that x has a coefficient of one. This is also true for functions in the form of y equals a and through the dx plus c plus k. So let's take a look at how would we rewrite the cube root of 8x plus 32 minus 2 so you can graph it using transformations. So the first thing I would do is I'd look at it and say, hmm, is there any greatest common factor? So, or what is underneath the radical only? I'm only looking for what's underneath the radical. So if I look at that, I look at the cube root of 8x plus 32. Okay, for negative two, the minus 2 on the outside is okay, but I look at this and I say, oh, I can take out an 8 there. If I took out an 8, I would have x plus 4, right? So essentially, we have this. The cube root of 8 parentheses x plus 4 minus 2. Well, what's the cube root of 8? Well, the cube root of 8 here is 2. We should know that. So now we have two cube roots of x plus 4 minus 2. Just the y equals. Okay? So, if we complete our equation here, 
that's, I actually completed the equation up there instead of down here at step two. So my complete equation would be y equals two cube roots of x plus four minus two. So it's the parent, it's the parent function of the cube root of x stretched vertically by a factor of two, shifted horizontally left four units and vertically down two units. Okay. And you should be able to, that's what I, I really want you to be able to do this. I really want you to be able to tell me from the parent function what you would do for a cubic function. After that, graphing it, I would expect you to use your graphing calculator to be able to do that. So this would be graphing radical functions. Okay. 